Welcome back, everybody. We are continuing this exciting Patek, which is a chapter, Lamed Zion, 37, whereby you could even, you can say, despite the entire Tanya, the sequence of information, you can say Lamed Vav and Lamed Zion, 36 and 37, um, are very much connected, for the Alteva kind of uh, demonstrates in these very chapters the master plan of the entire creation, what it's all about, why Hashem created the world again based on that famous Medish Tan um, and um, which was mentioned a number of times, and how does each individual play a role in fulfilling this master plan? As an individual, what does he accomplish through his learning Tate and his doing mitzvahs? What actually transpires in the um, behind the scene, or in the context of fulfilling this the mandate the way it's prescribed in Medrash and Chuma? And Yisava Kodesh Baruch Hu Yisleid did it with Achdeinim. Kodesh Baruch Hu wanted a dwelling place in this very physical world, not in the Elam Misalyenim, not in the supreme world, but Mm, precisely in this, in this very physical world. Mm, and again, has each individual play a role? Um, collectively, all of Amisro play a role, and what is the end game? Uh, so, um, again, in, in Lamed Vov, page 36 chapter, the Altarebbe generally uh, describes the, the plan itself in detail. In Lamed Zayin, the Altarebbe begins how we play the role. What is our, how we how our role uh, unfolds in implementing this very plan? And the uh, the Al in uh, in uh, because uh, we we begins this uh, chapter in 36, 37, that ultimately everything is a result of Masena Vedasena, our actions and our service throughout the entire uh, time of Golos. Actually, it began from Antera. Um, and it's interesting if it ever points out why the Alter Rebbe, because I believe in the previous class or classes we mentioned the the, the entire span of Golos, but um, in essence it's the 3,300 years from the time the Torah was given, all our accomplishments from all the way back then, uh, and the um, so why does Alter Rebbe use the time of exile, but precisely the time of exile, even as opposed to um, time, um, as opposed to rather time of better times within Am Yisrael, that's where uh, we accomplished most of the accomplishments in the context of the the wording or the details of the master of the, um, of the, ma the master plan of Akkadish Baruch Hu, our mandate and if we and our mandate in this master plan we fulfilled most of it or um, qualitatively for sure um, precisely in the time of calls even in comparison to the better times we had throughout the 3300 years so that's a, again the Rebbe has a whole um, uh, explanation why the Alter Rebbe adds uh, or uses calls man mashad meshachag Precisely, goes as opposed to the entire 3,300 years from Matan Teda. <clears throat> but again, um, uh, in the end of the day, it is from all, all our services and all our work throughout all this time, which ultimately produces the Messianic Age, Messianic Era, the times of Mashiach, which again the world will be Yimalim Kveid Hashem or the Lashon of the Shayo, which the Rambam brings it, actually concludes the entire Sefer, Umal Horetz Deyas Hashem, the entire land, again, not the Oretz Haruchni, any spiritual level or level or plane, which is Ganeiden and so on, that's obviously full of Deyas Hashem, but even the Oretz HaTacht in this very physical world, I mean, not only has some trickling in some knowledge or some acquaintance of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, every single part of Elam has it, let's see how the cup is full, and so it's full. You say the whole world will be full of knowledge of Hashem. This will be the obvious. And again, the famous Pesukim brought in Shayo, which we repeat a number of times, even throughout Davening and Atahore, um, the Ki'ayin um, Di'ayin Yiru, which we say in Brich Shemais and Yontif, 
um, we open the Sefer Torah, we see these Pesukim, we say, yo, ki ayin bi ayin yiru, the physical eye, we will have eye-to-eye eye contact with the Kodesh Baruch Hu. The <coughs> Mali, or the Yevro Kolbasa, the physical flesh, will not only be in tuned to it, but the Ro, they will be able to see, like you see a chair and a table, will be able to see Elokuz, God, godliness, etc. So again, this is when it comes to total fruition, and Pedic Lamed Zayin, the Alter Rebbe, begins to explain us how how each one of us, um, how we actually, imp- how was it implemented individually and ultimately collectively all around us. So we have to understand that mm, we can't, um, probably it's worthwhile to note, we can't just think, oh, collectively the job is done. It's an individual investment. It's an individual investment. Um, no one eats for us, no one sleeps for us, because we believe that it's a individual responsibility. In this case, it's more than a responsibility. The fact that HaKadosh Baruch Hu put a yid down in this world means to say there's a certain part of the world that he himself and nobody else could elevate and bring to completion, to be introduced to that messianic age of Gilei Lukus. So we have to look at this as, again, uh, individual, not only responsibility, but no one really can do, when you say responsibility, maybe I have the responsibility in the end, someone could do this same job for me, <clears throat> but I have the responsibility to do it, but no, it's much more than that. No one could do that if Hashem again brought you into this world at a certain time, in a certain place, with certain circumstances, He's telling you it's, it's, that, is, that, is very, that is the very message that you can do something, you have a mandate, that you can do something that any other party cannot. But again, sorry, it's just always worthwhile note, note, noting that it's, it, it, is a, um, it is an individual responsibility, even though these very words today, the you know, broadens the look on the understanding of the, of the um, accomplishment that says, you know, every, this, you do it, and you do it, and eventually, collectively, all of Amisro lifts the entire world to that um, 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 state that that climactic state of um, of uh, Yemais Hamashiach, when Ayin the Ayin Yiru, the time when again godliness will be uh, present, uh, overtly present in this very physical world. So um, we're holding in ninety four, which is in the original text ninety four. Um, um, on the by the words, it's actually the uh, the eighth line from the top, and you could find it as well, according to the corresponding English text. Uh, a text, um, which is the word begins. Vali um Kasher, Kasher Kola Nishoma, the Nefsholikis. Borhata di Noya Lay Hina Melchalum Shakil Nibi. So I will always ma- as I mentioned always in order to get a more clarity in all this what we even just recap over here. That you could always go back to the previous classes in the link box Tanya or in the um TanyaOnline.com, which is again the same, the very same class, hosted by the very same hosts, but yet the advantage, it's a site which is solely on this class, and you could follow, actually easily follow with the text, uh, very, very easy access mm, into the previous classes, and um, in a way that... um, and that um, even every different classes are divided, you could very f- easily find the, the previous classes. Um, and um, again, each one, each, it, it, there's the same um, a, a, a possibility to follow with the text of that particular class. Um, so you could, again, go there again, even regarding this last few two chapters, Lamed Vav and Lamed Zayin, 36 and 37, two we're, hold, we're holding um up till now, in other words, the information up till now, if you want to get a flow in this very message. So what did al Tarebis say in the very beginning of this Lamed Zayin, and again, the way he builds up, and he says that the Yid doing a mitzvah, what he does is he elevates the item through which the, the mitzvah is done, 
which is again the significant majority of, ilum, of our Arteta mitzvahs, is dealing with the physical, of its tefillin, of its mezuzah, <coughs> etc. <coughs> Tzitzis, and all, all, most of the, again, the significant majority of our mitzvahs are, are deal with the physical, and the physical up till now is receiving its energy from Klippa Snege, from that neutral level of Klippa, and when he does the mitzvah, he elevates it. He elevates it that at that point it's receiving its energy from Kedusha, from the world of divinity, the world of sanctity, <coughs> as opposed to the Klippa Snege. Again, we're using terms which we elaborated and we explained um, um, and expanded on the, 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 the term, the terminology on the precise message from Klippa Snege to Kedusha. And then the Al-Tenebbe goes on and it says even when a person learns Torah, when he's not Mamish feeling, dealing with the physical, and he explains how it works when person learns Torah. Then he goes on and he says, even more so, that Elam Hazad, which ultimately led, the part of Elam Hazad, which ultimately led for you to take the Gemara and sit down and learn Torah, or for you to do Mitzvah, is also elevated, which means you, you had the strength in order to, to, to strength to sit down and learn Torah, to do the Mitzvah, via the good nourishing meal that you had the hour before. So the meal is starting from bread. It's also part of Ilam Hazad is wheat and there's water. Again, this is again elevating different level dimensions within the four elements within creation, Damon Samehai Medaber, which is the inanimate the world of vegetation, animal and so on. And when a person consumes that, if it's meat, if it's the flour, the water, as an example which right there you have uh, all three elements. <coughs> so that itself, and that gave you the kayak to learn Taita. So that itself, <coughs> that itself is elevated into the words and into the spirit and it's into the sanctity of the Taita you're learning and the mitzvah you're doing. So it's another dimension of Olam Haza, which is elevated. And he said, uh, he goes on, like there's uh, maybe a few words before, will also be elevated. This is where we left off. The entire world, where is the world receiving its energy from? Obviously, it's receiving its energy from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We explain time and again, it's only the energy of Hashem that ultimately vitalizes, not only then in the six, the six days of creation, Hashem was the sole creator of the world, hence the world, every part of the world, is connected or is an extension of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, but not only then, because then you could say a Kodesh Baruch Hu created, then he just left creation, so not necessarily there is the constant Dvar Hashem energy within creation. In other words, the energy of creator within creation, so he's saying, no, I'm a Chadish B'tubi B'chol Yim Tami. So Hashem just created and left creation as it is. A Kodesh Baruch Hu revitalizes creation every day, and the Lashem is not only every day, Every moment the Kodesh is pumping energy with it, 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 into and infuses mm, creation with the Gizgali energy in order simply for creation to be, to exist. Even a stone, which is again inanimate, if a Kodesh Baruch pulled the energy from the stone at that very moment, mm, it's not going to be a broken stone, a fragmented stone, it just wouldn't exist, it would cease to exist, which means disappear, it means to say, because the was constantly creating, the reason why you see that even stone, I say stone, in comparison to anything else, which is you see more life, it's more lively, which one would be convinced that there's something, there's an energy which is constantly flowing in that, because you see it's moving, maneuvering from one place, moving from one place to another, it isn't stationary as opposed to stone and you just don't see any life the way it was created in the time of creation this is the way it continues to be and to exist no the other the famous um, the famous Medish Tilim the, the Baal Shem that was Mefarish or the Shem that explained and expanded on this very notion which is brought in say Medish Tilim Leilam Hashem Dvorcha Nitzah Bashamayim explained there that it's the 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 dvorcha, the sarma moris, the ten sayings, which was, that was the energy which ultimately created, continues le'olam. It continues to in, in a constant basis continues to create and this very creation. In other words, even the stone itself, which is inanimate, and apparently one would say, well, there is no life force in this stone. It's just a stone. But the opposite is so true. If a Baruch, a Baruch is constantly pumping energy into that cell, 
So the energy, the, the stone, the um, the energy we pull from the stone, the stone would literally disappear on, on the on the very same moment. So because Baruch was mechadish b'tuvi b'cholim tov masvish, every moment stone, the stone itself is re renewed, revitalized by Kodesh Baruch Hu. And that's the way it's able to exist. And I just say this in the context that, so in the end of the day, what does it tell us? That there ain't no body, there's nothing else in Kodesh Baruch Hu. In every single level, that in, in, in the world itself, the fabric of creation, that is a Kodesh Baruch Hu. There's nothing else. There's no other independent energy which is <coughs> vitalizing that particular part, of any, any particular part of creation. It's all an extension of a Kodesh Baruch It is a Kodesh The problem is, and this is what our Veda is, problem is, and this is what our mandate, our service is, the, that the energy goes through, the, the energy coming from a Kodesh Baruch Hu, it, it, it's channeled by a Klippa Snega, which obscures the Emes Hashem Lailam. And that's the very reason why the world doesn't demonstrate and scream. I don't want to say with a voice. But the presentation of Elam Haza is not a presentation, again, pre Aved of the Yid, pre service of the Yid. The world on its own does not present, does not demonstrate <coughs> the Achtos Hashem, the oneness of a Kodesh quite on the contrary. The world is an obstacle, as we all know it. The world is to be challenging. When we come to deal with it, or when we live in Elam Haza, when we go, when we stand, as um, stand as our uh, with our mandate. In other words, when we when we um, when we establish our uh, excitement, our motivation, our shtel. In other words, when we get out there to demonstrate our avodas mm-hmm. Hashem. When you say get out of our, of our when I say get out there out of our comfort zone to establish our relation with Hakadosh Baruch Hu, which again, it's about Aveda, it's about service, Teira, Tfila, Tzdok, and so on. <clears throat> and the fact that the Neshama invest, is invested in body, Neshama can be very excited, but at the end of the day, the Neshama, whether it's in Ghanaian, is divested of body in any connection to Elam Haza or to anything physical, but because Jehovah takes the Neshama invested in this physical world, so you can't really run away from it. <clears throat> and the point is not to run away from it, but when you... Um, when you begin your Aveda, when one begins Aveda, he finds that Elam Hazza becomes a very big, a great obstacle and a challenge in his Aveda. So the question is, why is Elam Hazza just an extension of a Kodesh Baruch Hu? And the answer is that it, the energy um, flows from a Kodesh Baruch Hu via the Klippas Nega. Again, this Klippas Nega, which we mentioned time and again, or explained in the last few classes, it's that neutral type of Klippa, which means Klippa is in, in another term for impurity, and because it goes its channel through that Klippa Snega, so the world is ultimately receiving energy, true, it's a godly energy, but because it goes through the channel of Klippa Snega, and there's certain other parts of Elam Haza which receive its energy um, from a lower level, and a significantly lower level of Klippa, of Tum of impurity, and for that reason, that it, in the end, it's Nothing exists independently of Kodesh Baruch Hu, But for example, you know, we, we know that in, in, in there are certain mm, items within Elam Hazak, Kodesh Baruch Hu says, um, disengage, prohibits us to engage with in any, in any level. It tells us you must disengage, you must hold, not connect to that, for example, classically a co- non kosher piece of meat. Where is a non kosher pe- piece of meat re- receiving its energy? In other words, <clears throat> it's all Hashem's world. And nothing has apparently in, independent, um, or uh, nothing has in, nothing has independent energy other than Hakadosh Baruch Hu, <clears throat> including that piece of meat. It's in a world which Hakadosh Baruch Hu not only created but constantly creates. So why can't I engage with that piece? Why can't I consume that piece of meat? And with a godly purpose and a godly sake, I'll make the bracha with the greatest kavana. And I will follow through with my shem shem, with my shemai, which means I'll learn and do mitzvahs. Why can't I mm, elevate or why can't I connect with that piece of meat? And the answer is because the chayis of a kodesh which vitalizes el maza, it goes through different channels. There's a channel which is shows kibbutz which is a very intense mm, spirit of impurity. Which channels the chayis coming the kodesh baruch and that vitalizes that. Mm, 
gives the energy to this not kosher piece of meat or anything else which HaKadosh Baruch Hu says do not engage with because it will bring you to that very low and nadir level of impurity God forbid Rahman al-Islam and then there's uh, the energy of HaKadosh Baruch Hu which is funneled which is which is channeled through Klipa Snega which is again intermediate level of Klipa I say we, we, we spoke about it again in previous classes, which you can easily turn to the previous class or classes, <clears throat> and even chapter 6, which Alter really introduces and elaborates on the Klippus Nega versus Tushal Klippus at Meis. But on the end of the day, it's a neutral Klippus, meaning that we have the ability to transform, to elevate it on its own. You can't compare a mezuzah to an apple. A mezuzah is intrinsically holy, while an apple <clears throat> is neutral. I mean, to say it has the, the neutrality consists of the fact that uh, I could elevate it, I could make a bracha, eat it for a godly purpose, follow through with that very godly purpose, which I had intend, in, in, in the intention initially to eat it, to learn Torah, to do a mitzvah, so not only, so what happens is the apple itself is, uh, is elevated to the world of Kedusha, to the Allah Shana Tarebi, like a sacrifice, and the sacrifice of Eulah, which is the quintessential um, sacrifice within the world of Karbanis, as we know. Eulah completely ascends, even within the name it's Eulah, it ascends to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So then, this so that, that, so the apple itself reaches a level of kedusha. You could even say, like the mezuzah, if it's an ayla, it's a carbon, it's a mitzvah. But that's only <coughs> that is only by, by my choice, and that's that's where that sense of neutrality. I could chas show them eat the apple, even with a bracha for that matter, that I could eat it with a non-godly purpose. I'm tired, I want to go ahead and speak Lashon Hara, God forbid. But I have no strength to join this Lashon Hara conversation. I'll eat the apple and then I'll go ahead and I'll gain the strength. And, then, and, and I'll go ahead and join that Lashon Hara conversation. What you did was, you brought the apple to the world of Lashon Hara, which Lashon Hara is one of the 30, 365 which is associated with Shalosh Kuzat Tameiz. This is one of the areas that Shem says, do not engage with, because that is intrinsically, inherently evil, inherently impure, like the non-kosher piece of meat. So what happens is the apple itself falls into the abyss of the of that of that experience, of the abyss of the the energy, the negative energy of, of um, in other words, aligned with the negative energy of, of uh, the Lashon Hara or any other chas v'shalom negative deed or action. Rather, negative deed, a neg- negative deed or speech, or negative thought even, as we spoke a number of times. Our mandate consists of being careful of action, speech, and even thought, vision, what I look at, and so on and so forth. So, so what the al now what the al points out, when the person does his abayda, he does his service, so the mitzvahs which he's involved with as part of the has of this physical world he elevates them the flour, the water which again that was a piece of bread which he ate and that was that's which what led him to do the mitzvah or to learn to it's also elevated so everything within the which has the ability again which has that the, the, which comes and is associated with Klippa Senega which is that Klippa which is again the neutral Klippa which it, it, I have the ability not only that that becomes a, an important part of my mandate if not the mandate to elevate this, which is associated with this neutral klipa, which is the, anything within Elam has within the physical world, that, to the exclusion of Hashem says clearly, do not do, do not engage with, maybe a deraisa, a derabanan, a Torah commander, a binic commander, in the end of the day, once it's established that it's, it is prohibited, so it is certainly receiving its energy from the Shal Shkubs of Mason. In other words, the Godly energy is channeled from the lower level of Klippa, of impurity, and we have no right, and quite on the contrary, we do damage once we uh, engage with it, and we, and, 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 and uh, in other words, not only we don't elevate it, it brings us into that very Rahman uh, and God forbid area. But Klippa Snega is our mandate. In other words, to, to elevate Klippa Snega, that becomes a very mandate. Through every mitzvah we do, we take something which was receiving its energy or channeled again through Klippus Nega and we elevate it to the world of Kedusha right now it's receiving its 
energy from Kedushuf, it's the Eshik, it's the Lulav, it's the Tefillin, and so on and so forth. But more so, the, this, which I was involved as a human being within Elam Hazer, within this physical world, which led me to do the mitzvah, is also elevated. So it's the bread I eat, the cucumbers, the tomatoes, whatever it is. That's what I, mean, I ate for lunch, and then I went ahead and learned Taito or did a mitzvah. So that is also elevated. So when I do that mitzvah, I do that uh, service, and you do that service, and this one does that service, and the other does that service, eventually the world in its entirety, which is receiving its energy as well from Klippas Nega, shakes itself, it shakes itself away from the energy of Klippas Nega and is elevated to Gdusha. And if a world is elevated to Gdusha, it becomes natural, it's, it becomes the obvious Con- the, the, the consequence to that, the result of that is so, is the natural result of that is that the world, the lights come on, the world sees eye to eye, is in tuned with its creator because there's no kisli, there's no cover up, there's nothing obscuring the God, the energy from Elam Hazas, so the world is screaming itself, Ene Mabade. It's the entire world is being is is feels and is part of the malchus of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, the kingdom, the the Hakadosh Baruch Hu's reign. The world, the natural state of the world, is to 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 feel and to um, demonstrate the oneness of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the knowledge of Hashem is filled, Mullah means every part of the is filled with the knowledge of Hashem. That's a, that's a natural consequence to when Elam Hazza is elevated from Klippa Snega to the world of Kedusha. And therefore, these all these psukim fit perfectly in I be I near. Why shouldn't I see God eye to eye? God is the creator. Not only created thousands of years ago creation, he constantly creates creation. Creation has no independent existence. The fabric of creation is the Dvar Hashem, the godly energy, which is within creation. So if it's not covered with the, <coughs> with the with channel through Chumanon Slan Shos Kibzatmeis or Klippas Nega, it obviously, in the world itself, will be Megala, will, uh, will <coughs> demonstrate the Hashem Echad, the oneness of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But it's in our it's in our hands that we do this aveda again individually, which ultimately has a collective or has a collective result, or every individual does his aveda so collectively in the the entire world again the result is that the entire world is elevated from its klipas nega from the energy of klipas nega into the energy of kedusha. Now, what, what, uh, I, I say this a bit orally because it would easy, be easier to, f- to f- flow through the wording over here. So, the mandate is not to be, again, we have Leicester, remember we have the Mitzvah, not only Mitzvah Say, which we're pretty much emphasizing, we're dealing with right now, but how does the Leicester come into the picture, even though we alluded to this, but clearly in every, in everyone's mandate in bringing about this master plan having a dwelling place in this physical world is <clears throat> because when staying away from an Aveda, something Hashem says not to do which is the Leisese do not do because when and that itself becomes an obstacle of the world of the Aliyah of Elam because what you did was and again the Aliyah of Elam and your ability in your mandate of elevating your parti- this, this which you're particularly involved with, because you're bringing part of yourself down into the loneliness of Shalskut Satmeis. I did an Aveda Rahman al Slan. I engaged, I ate something non kosher. The energy of Shalskut Satmeis is flowing you through your sinews, literally, because this corresponds to the Shasagidim. Is Kinegat Shasag Mises We have 365. A gidim, which are the sinews which correspond to the 365 Avedis. It's not just a number sin. In other words, Lysa said this, Hashem says, do not to do. It's not just a number which match. It's the, unfortunately, the energy of Klippa, of impurity, flows through and anchors, it, it, uh, flows through the sinews of man, who, Rahman al which God forbid, engage with that sin and, uh, and anchors the person. And his Aveda 
it doesn't allow the this which is associated with Kripa Snega, in other words, the neutral Kripa, or, or his, which is associated with his entire Aveda, all the positive mitzvahs, and all this, which he, he uh, is to accomplish via his positive mitzvahs, there is an interference because he anchored himself down, he's one person, it's one entity, and with a person engaging in Rahman al God forbid, in the Aveda, he's anchoring his energy down into the world of impurity. So he causes a great confusion within himself, within his service, and therefore it's not enough just to do the good stuff and say, well, all the good stuff I do, I am elevating myself, the world around me, <clears throat> to elokus, to godliness, meaning to say, I'm elevating it from this Klippus Nega to the world of Gdusha, <clears throat> but it's equally important that a person is careful, and more than careful, he's scrupulous, chas v'shalem, not to engage with any Aveda, which is again, this is the 365 mitzvahs laicesses. We know that tell you there's 613 mitzvahs, 248 of the positive mitzvahs, which correspond for that matter to the limbs of men, and 365 mitzvahs laicesses, which correspond to the sinews of men. <clears throat> and we have to equally be careful in the laicesses, and this is what Hashem says not to do, and not only because we know it from the Yidin, we have to do what Hashem says and stay away from what Hashem doesn't say without any explanations, but if we're looking in the, if we're focusing on the, on the, on the as a, how, of our role as, an, as individuals fulfilling Hashem's master plan within creation, we have to realize that it interferes, <clears throat> it anchors a person down into areas which does not allow him you have something which you want to fly high, but if something is holding that mm, vehicle and it anchors it down into very low levels and very strongly anchored down, you will have all the motors and energy which wants to uplift it. It's very difficult for this spirit to be uplifted. So does it mean that a person should say, okay, you know what, I, I, I was involved, and, and if, I, if I'm not particularly careful, I'm going to stop doing my Alveda because I'm not gaining any, I can't be, I can be nothing can be elevated if, if part of me is well anchored into the, the, um, into the, into the lowliness of Shoshkub Satmeis, the impurity of Shoshkub Satmeis. In the end of the day, obviously we have to continue trying to be, to be careful from now and onwards, and realize that it interferes. But, we always have to go on with everything which comes to our to to us, and including in, in when we're dealing with other, another yid. Mm. We have to get involved with mitzvah. Say first of all, when it comes to society today, you know, people uh, most of Am Yisrael, you can't uh, not adequately educated, even though the problems still remain. Every avader, every every bite a person, any yid takes of something that's not kosher, it is doing enormous harm and damage. To him as an individual, and collectively, that's where we carry the responsibilities um, of other Yidin. But obviously, to start somewhere, we have to start always with the Mitzvah say, um, or namely, the easy way to get, to get people's consciousness and awareness. And the Mitzvah itself is something very great, based on Mitzvah so many places, in Gemara, and mainly in, 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 in Talmud, um, about a Yid doing a Mitzvah, a Yid putting on Tefillin, and putting, doing a, um, putting up a Mezuzah, and so on. Uh, so we have to be involved in, in every, all the areas, but we, we have to still understand that it's not only the mitzvah say the good stuff we do, but we we, we ought to be very careful, chasashol, not to engage in something that Hashem says clearly not to do, because that um, brings the person down into the world of shalosh kibbutz atmes again, the, the lower level, the inferior, the lower level of klipa, which has no aliyah, which has no way to be elevated. Something that Hashem says not to do. Even though it me, you know, I ate that meal and I'm ready to do mitzvah and we will learn Teda for an hour. If that meal wasn't kosher, it is, it is, it is, it is it's indescribable what's really happening. <clears throat> but in, 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 in the, even in the subsequent, so to say, good deeds and learning Teda that you're doing, in the end of the day, the Teda, because the Teda received the energy from the children's of May, the whole Teda is brought down. The Teda is the most, it comes some of us as well, as the Gemara says.
the whole tail is brought into the world of impurity. Therefore, we have to we, because because every Yachman son of Eda does it. It's not it's in, in, in this, it does it damage, but in this case, it anchors the individual, the Yid who's Eved Hashem, into the Shul Shkutzat Meis, which doesn't have any idea, doesn't have any elevation. Now there is a notion of Chuba that we're able to yank ourselves away from the connection to that to, of that of that I- impure. Um, a spirit in pure world. <clears throat> That's, that is the virtue of tshuva. More so, this is which is a special uh, level within tshuva that the advertent sins can even become merits. But again, it's the 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 um, the um, subject of tshuva, which there's so many different levels within tshuva. To reach this level, this above mention, um, this dainus nasalik is okay. That it's a special chuba that Dr. Rebbe elaborates in Pei Zayin, the seventh chapter. But the notion of dropping what I was involved with, that itself alleviates me as an individual that I can go ahead and <clears throat> fulfill my mandate. It means to say the positive stuff that I'm doing in order to elevate this world to Akadish Baruch. And then the Al Tareb goes on. I'm going to just even add this um, orally to see the the, the Al goes on. So the world is elevated, but what happens to this, which is associated with Shalshim Seth Meis on its own within the world itself? And be prior to my engaging, God forbid, with it. So Al Tareb says, in the end of the day, because the the Klipas Nega is a bridge between Kedusha and Shalashim Zeth Meis. And, and understandably so. The world comes, the, the, the energy comes from God, which is Kaddish. <clears throat> and it ultimately is channeled by Klippas Nega, but the Shalashim Zeth Meis, it's another layer. Obviously, it's a total different type of layer, but in the end of the day, it's another layer, a thick layer, which <clears throat> there is no Nega, there's no light, hence we have to disengage with it completely, as opposed to Klippas Nega. It is... It is neutral. I mean, there's some clipper there, but we have the ability to elevate it. it means to say that there is uh, there is a, there there is less um, cover up with the clipper mega than that thick cover up of shalshkibs at So shalshkibs at So shalshkibs at receives its energy via clipper mega. It's like one curtain, another curtain. And you found that this very thick curtain doesn't allow the light to come through at all. It's a gradual process from sun. To, to, to sun, which is light, to less light, less light, and then you have a thick lather, thick curtain, which is not allowing the light to penetrate at all. It could be that without those thin curtains, the, the sunlight would penetrate that thick, very thick curtain. So it's gradual, it's a few curtains, and eventually that thick curtain doesn't allow the light to come through completely. It remains completely dark, in this context, dark, completely impure. In, in the face of the purity, the tar of the kedusha of, of the, the of Akadosh Baruch Hu, the energy associated with the Kodesh Baruch. So, because as we, and we can perfectly appreciate it, the light comes out. It, it is it is tackled or say channeled by Klipas Mega, and then by Shalosh Klipas It ends up to be Shalosh Klipas Atmeis, the next low in the lower level. So when what it, what 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 the is getting out of here, when this is cured and this is elevated, Klipas Mega. Consequently, Shalosh Klipsat Meis itself is obliterated. If you have two sides and there's a bridge in between, if you crush the bridge, these two sides will not be connected. This will fall apart. And meaning to say, this which has no uh, strength, no energy, will fall apart. Because what was holding it up? The bridge was holding it up. The bridge connected this which is solid <clears throat> and to this which was just very vulnerable and very easy to fall apart, but the bridge was holding it together. But when the bridge is broken apart, that completely falls apart, and while this remains strong, and maybe even stronger, because it's not any more connected to this which, is, which, is, um, which doesn't have any adequate strength on its own. And similarly, when the when 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 uh, when the klipas nega, which means when the physical world is elevated by a klipas nega, so shalosh klipas shalosh klipas which receives its energy via klipas nega, falls away completely. And we'll see in the words of the Al-Tadab, And then again, the world remains pure, and the world remains. Mm, 
um, um, a, a, a divine world, and again, in the context of the world, is overtly aware and lives with the Enid Muvade, the Emes Hashem Le'elam, the God, the reality becomes again the norm with an Elam Hazas, similar to the way it's in Ganeiden. The only thing is, in Ganeiden, it is a world which is just there for reward, while this world. This is where the Tachlis have come the ultimate intention for all of creation. This is the timing of Beide, the Abish that finally reaches his, um, uh, his, um, his pleasure, his state of pleasure, that the world itself, which was created in a way that it obscures the reality of Hashem, here demonstrates overtly the oneness of Hashem. The Moli is Kolha, the Kveda Hashem is Kolha, is the honor and the glory because Baruch fills and again overtly becomes obviously, becomes manifest, becomes the norm that the world does, demonstrates the Enid Mabadi, which is not only Tainug of Nivra, Tainug of created being, which is the Neshama <coughs> in Ganeitin and so on, but rather Tainug of the Beide, the Tainug of Creator, <coughs> which is Beide Reich, which this is, uh, there's no comparison. That's why this world, this is what the, as the Mishnah says, this is the world which, from the entire reality of the coming of coming world, the name. Because here's the purpose. So we're going to follow, we must follow a few little bit to tell the text over here. So you can please find it in, in again in page 94 in the original text, corresponding in the, um, again in the, um, in the English, you have it in the Kasher Kol and Neshama. Where, um, as as every single every neshama, the nefesh of the kishu b'chol yisrael, the godly soul within exists with every man. Because chalak is the pratis l'shishim ribui, which is divided to six hundred thousand neshamis. As we know, in the end of the day, there's more, because from these neshamis itself, as Dr. Rebbe will explain later, <coughs> there is every neshama is subdivided into many many neshamis. So in the end of the day, and as we know it, there's many more than 630,000 Yidin, even in one generation. Today, Kei But generally, there's the number of 600,000, and eventually they're divided. And again, throughout all generations, etc. So the, 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 when, the, when, this, um, when every Neshama, within existence of every Yid, which is divided in detail to 600,000, Tikayim Kol Nefesh Pratis, every individual, Will fulfill Kol Tariyag Mitzatera all the 613 mitzvahs. Shasal Leisase, the 600, 365 don't do negative mitzvahs. What happens then? Lahafri to separate Shasa Gidim, the 365 sinews shall ne'er dam of the blood of the animal soul. The soul, again, the, the, the soul which invests in the blood, Kinefesh Abbasar Bedamhi, which vitalizes the entire body, Shebeguf, Shalayinku, that it should nourish, Vikabu Chayiz Babedazu, then receive its energy with that sin, God forbid me, Achas Mishol Shkibzat Meis Ligami, from one of the Shol Shkibzat Meis, which means from that world of Shol Shkibzat Meis, which is again the lower level of Klippa, lower level of impurity, the impurity where there is no light at all, hence everything which is associated with it is intrinsically impure, the non-kosher piece of meat. Again, for that matter, everything what Hashem says, do not do it, receiving its energy from the nadir level of tum of impurity, and hence is the importance of staying away from all these 365 mitzvahs, to separate to, this, to the year 6, 365 sinews of blood, which again, where the blood flows, which the blood carries the nefshech the blood carries that soul, the nefshech bahamis, nefshech that soul which vitalizes the blood, that it should not receive its energy via this avera from this, from, from these, from one of these, shalos klips atmeis, which means from this impure, 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 impure these impure spirits, that's where that very piece of meat is receiving its energy from. Or any other 365 mitzvahs lay which our senses do not do, and maybe the maybe the the Torah prohibition and their branches, which ultimately become rabbinic prohibition. From this perspective and point of view, it is irrelevant if it's a deiraisa, it's a Where is this, let's say, food item? We can stick to the 
food, again, which many mitzvahs like says are associated with food, if it's tape, it's kilayat kerem, it's arla, and so on. But if even the Rabbanan says you're not allowed to eat it, so where, once the Rabbanan established, you're not allowed to eat it, and Taylor says, Shalom, Yichavi, Agate, Chuzki, Mechavi, Amalach, we ought to listen to the Rabbanan. So the Rabbanan are telling you, when they say do not eat it, right now it's receiving its energy from Shalosh, Fibs, Atmeyes, from this level of impurity, similar to that non kosher piece of meat. Hence, I must stay away not only from the Raises, but even the Rabbanan. Because the Rabbonans, even all the Rabbonans, means rabbinic prohibitions, are also receiving its energy from Shalosh Kibbutz Atmeis. And the Shuv Leituchal Nefesh HaChayuni is Lalez Lashem. So my Nefesh, this Nefesh HaBahamis, Nefesh HaChayuni, which is vital physically, we're not talking about the godly soul. We're talking about the soul, which is again involved in, 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 and continues to vivify the body, that cannot be elevated, Lalez Lashem, to cannot ascend to a Kodesh Baruch, Im Nitzma Betumas HaShol Shuz HaTmeis. If it was impurified by the impurity of the Shalashim's at Mez, they have no way to be elevated. As we spoke time and again in the original chapters in 6, 7, that once something is associated with Shalashim's at Mez, I can't be the Chacham and say, it is, you say God is completely impure, you say God is completely obscure, it's the Cheshach, it's Tumah, and so on and so forth. I will try to elevate, Hashem says, in disengage, if, we, if there's an ability that we have, it, if we have the ability to elevate it in one way or another, and the would say engage with it, in different times, or whatever it is. But Hashem says it's Asur, Asur again, even though Tarebbe used the Lushan, the reason it explained why it's Asur means to say it's, it's, it's intrinsically connected to Jews. It means Asur, it's, it's imprisoned, it's incarcerated, it's anchored in the world of Shalosh Kibbutz Atmeis, this low, lower level of impurity. So it doesn't have any idea, there's no way to elevate it. Again, if they, if they had the ability to elevate it, Hashem would tell us, engage with it. Similar to the Kosh tells us, engage with the apple and the orange. If that's going to contribute to your feeling good in order to go ahead and do a mitzvah, or to do a good deed, or to get involved with something positive, based on the mandate of Taita, so the apple and the orange are, 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 are because they're contributing um, to your subsequent action, or learning Taita, or any good thing you're involved with, so that itself has an aliyah, it has an it's elevation. But when Akkadosh Baruch Hu says, do not engage with it, means to say that there is no way that it could be elevated. Again, one is receiving its energy from the neutral klipa, which can go back and forth, or or or, 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 <clears throat> or ahead, or again it be elevated, or God forbid, the other way around, like we explained. But this has no way to be elevated. It's just a matter of annulling them and staying away, legamri, completely removing it. Again, maybe in action or speech or even thought. When Hashem says, do not speak, do not think, do not look, or do not do, <clears throat> this which Hashem says, stay away from, is receiving its energy from Shalosh Kibbutz Atmei, the lower level of the Klippa. So the way of, of dealing with it is just by staying away from it. <clears throat> In order that I should be, shouldn't, God forbid, anchor part of me, <clears throat> where my blood, which is the container for my nefesh, is flowing through, again, these sinews which are anchored in Shalosh Yubzat Meis, which doesn't give me the ability, my never the ability to leave it, to alleviate itself and elevate itself, again, via the mitzvahs I say that I'm doing, the positive mitzvahs that I'm doing, because of my, the, my involvement in any of these negative mitzvahs, mitzvahs that this what Hashem says not to. Which because of you know, it's when it comes to the spirit and purity, avir. It ought to be removed from the land, not to be, we can't get, engage with it to elevate it. And that is, again, by Mitzvah's Leises, and then Delta ever immediately crossed over to Mitzvah's Assei, the 248 Mitzvah's, <clears throat> that in order, that in, in, to draw the infinite light of the Kodesh Baruch Hu down here into this world. Again, as we mentioned, by doing a Mitzvah, the Tefillin is a physical object, the Mezuzah is a physical object, the Tzitzas are physical, the light of the Shabbos candle is physical, the rule of an esrik is physical. The significant majority of our mitzvahs are dealing with the physical because we draw the infinite light of the world down into this physical world. Lahal is loy. To elevate to HaKadosh Baruch Hu the kasher and to connect uli, <coughs> to tie uli yachid boi klolus ha-nefesh ha-chayun to the 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 um, the, the nefesh the, the soul this very soul to elevate it by its investment as we said before 
what is the energy that puts on this film? Where does the energy that uh, he, that uh, that does the, the mitzvah, the energy comes from the nefesh? In other words, if the live yid is able to put on tefillin, the nefesh kis can't put on tefillin. It wants to put on tefillin. It sends the message to put on tefillin, but it's the living, healthy body which puts on tefillin. The body is healthy and living because of the nefesh chayunis, this very nefesh, nefesh abbasar b'dami, which make it, which keeps the person alive. And that is elevated to God when the person utilizes his actions, his speech, his thoughts, again, which are receiving his energy from this nefesh, which keeps him alive. So, the nefesh itself is elevated from the state of Klippus Negev to the state, state of Kedusha. But that he accomplishes precisely through engaging in this, what Hashem says, do with the, with the Ratzin Hashem, is Pnimis Ritzin, with the core essence of, uh, the, uh, of a, uh, the Pnimis, means the inwardness of a Kodesh Baruch who exists in that mitzvah. I can't just say, God, be, uh, sit down and say, God, I love you. And that way my nefesh is elevated. No, it has to be through my involvement my involvement, my actual involvement in the mitzvah, the way Hashem says to do it, if it's the putting on film, the way Hashem says to do it. <clears throat> so my putting on film, like he explained, again, this is this is the culmination of what he said before, the tefillin is physical, so the tefillin is elevated. My hands are elevated, My in, in the end, and the nefshech itself, the godly, rather the um, the soul, which, the, the soul which simply keeps me alive, is elevated from Klippas Nega to the world of Gdusha. Again, via the Ramach Mitzvah, say the 248 Mitzvahs, to draw the infinite light of the Baruch Hu, to elevate to Him and to connect and to unite. Close Nefesh Chayyunish Ramach Ibarayabuch, the Nefesh, which keeps me alive, which is invested in 248 limbs of the body. Again, 248 corresponding to the 248 Mitzvahs, say. Be with the complete unity, to become completely one day with the Kodesh Baruch Kamesh Allah B'Tseini Baruch, just like. And the Kodesh Baruch Hu has said, it aroused, literally translated, in Hashem's ruts and Hashem's desire, in His master plan, to have a dwelling place in this very physical world. The Haim, Leila Merkava, and the Yid, whoever, whoever, or whoever serves the Kodesh Baruch Hu, would be a chariot, just like the Avis, you know, just like Avram Yitzhak Yaakov which uh, they're called in a number of places, starting from Zayar, they were called a Merkava to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and we mentioned many times. What is the notion of Merkava? I briefly mentioned it over here again. A chariot stands with a complete self-nullification to its rider. It's not when you go into a chariot and the rider sits down, and when you start going, and the chariot says, you know what, let's go straight, or let's go left today. <clears throat> and the rider has to say, chariot, I want to go right. It doesn't work that way. And even the chariot will eventually give in to the writer and say, okay, you want to go right, you're the boss, you have the reins, you have the ability to, or like today in contemporary, again, language of the car, it's the car doesn't say anything, it's easier to understand it with a chariot, because the chariot was much more control of the rider, but even in a car, it's not the car says, you know, let's go left, and you say, you want to go right, I'll give in to you, or maybe I won't, God forbid, it's where the rider wants to go, the one who has their hands on the wheel. The, 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 the chariot becomes just a vehicle to where the rider wants to go. It's not the other way around, God forbid. And the same thing, <clears throat> when it, and this is the, the, the description of the office of Ramitz Yaakov, as they were called a Merkava in Zohar. Starting from Zohar, they were called a Merkava to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, meaning to say HaKadosh Baruch Hu was the rider. They were vehicles to HaKadosh Baruch Hu in such a way that it's not that they didn't have any of their own things, their own desires. That <clears throat> because we all, many many of us, <clears throat> hopefully most of us and all of us, one day we also serve a Kodesh Baruch to some degree, <clears throat> to a great degree by many, by many. But from that to being a Merkava to a Kodesh Baruch is a bit of a gap, because in the end of the day, many of us, you know, I want to do this. I want, okay, Hashem, you want me to do that? I'll do that. The idea that. A yid to be, by Avram to be Yaakov, rather, it was a way that it wasn't in a Kodesh Baruch Hu, it wasn't, they didn't have their own desire, they didn't have their own interests. It was about them being a vehicle for the writer for a Kodesh Baruch Hu. A Kodesh Baruch Hu was Reichim, a Kodesh Baruch Hu has an, an important mandate to, be, to fulfill in this very physical world. <clears throat> And he needs a vehicle, Kaviyachal, this is the way he established the Roman Tzaviyachal, but HaKadosh Baruch Hu's vehicle, whatever HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted, he, that's, what, that's what was implemented. Like a rider wants to go from point A to point B, the vehicle does not, the Merkava, the chariot, doesn't even argue, doesn't even put his two cents in. 
wherever the writer wants to go, that's where it goes. A Kodesh Baruch Hu needed to implement all this that he wanted to implement in this very physical world. The Brahmi Yaakov were there for him, without any personal interest, no interior, no ulterior motives. They, it wasn't even like some times of and David the Shem he said really I want to sleep I don't want to eat don't want, okay Vishnu you want me to do this I'll do it for you that's not Kola Merkova yet because there's still I I want to go left okay you want to go right you're the one with the, with the reins and you or the, uh, the uh, you have you have the ability to go right you have the you, you can override a Merkova doesn't even have its it doesn't even demonstrate its two, two cents as something uh, in, 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 in any selfish interests or personal interest is just there for the writer to go from point A to point B and the same thing the Brahmins of Yaakov they lived their entire life there was nothing not in action not in speech not in thought it was all about them being a vehicle to a Kodesh Baruch not even with an interest again not even an interest an initial interest like the Merkava like the chariot when the writer hops onto the chariot it's, that chariot doesn't say anything I want to go with there, and maybe you want to go somewhere else. Let's have it out, okay? You're the boss. It's it just there for the rider, wherever the rider wants to go. That's what the, 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 the it's a vehicle which is taking the rider uh, to where he wants to go. And similarly, the others, the, the, they were Merkava to Akash Baruch, Hu, and this is ultimately what Akash Baruch Hu really wants from us. At the end of the day, he gave us a body, a healthy body, like Chasiyam Mishan Tevis. The 248 limbs and the 365 sinews to which carries the flow of the blood. The blood flows through these sinews and eventually the person <clears throat> is able to maintain his health as a result. And he gives us the 248 limbs. And he tells us, and again, which corresponded to 248 mitzvahs, the 365 gidim corresponded to 365 leses, Hashem says, make sure that all the energy flowing through your sinews, which again, an energy which is in the uh, the nefesh chayunis, the soul kinefesh basar bedam, he is in the blood, and which is flowing through your gidim, flowing through you, flowing through your sinews. Make sure that there is no energy of shol kibzet meis from the lower level of impurity, because that will anchor your whole system down in your nefesh chayunis. It will interfere of your nefesh being elevated to Hakadosh Baruch and that is ultimately their, your mandate. Our each one of us, the mandate of each one of us. And then again, we do what we have to do in the positive side, in, in the 248 minutes, as I say, in elevating this world again uh, via our personal world, as Dr. Rebbe again built up so mm, eloquently in the very, this very chapter. The mitzvah we do, and if it's mitzvah, as I say, and if it's Talmud Torah, and even doing a mitzvah or Talmud Torah, and ultimately the food that we eat and everything which we gain, engage with, with permissibility, obviously, with Coach Baruch was saying it's okay to do to eat a, a kosher piece of meat and a, and, a, and a kosher piece of bread and so on and so forth and then we go ahead and we live a life the way Kodesh Baruch Hu wants us to live with this we elevate the, our nefesh achayunis our nefesh achayunis which is again free because we're careful and it's not it's not anchored in inappropriate areas so it has the ability to fly to soar on high via our investment in Mitzvah Say and again it's our Nefshech Yunis it's the world around us because again we engage in this physical world in order to live in order to perform the day of Mitzvah again with this with this example classic example to repeat time and again in the context of food it's the food we eat which keeps us alive hence the food itself is elevated and eventually in the entire world as he's going to as Hashem in the next week's class we'll see how the Altar is, is <clears throat> uh, as we said, we said this orally, but again, we see in the text how from the individual of Aida, ultimately the entire world <clears throat> is elevated, and then it becomes obvious, Vimalik Kved Hashem, as Kol is the glory of HaKadosh Baruch becomes the most natural state, the, the honor of HaKadosh Baruch becomes uh, the norm within Elam Haza, and the world itself demonstrates that Enin Muvadeh, the most overt and revealed manner, Molo Aristeas Hashem, Kamayim Yom Chasim, have a wonderful evening.